In today's world, we utilize expensive and polluting fossil fuels to run our appliances, our homes, our cars, and almost every aspect of our modern technical lives. These systems are old, inefficient, and run on resources that are allegedly scarce. However, there is more to this than we've been told. There are actually two types of electrical power systems, one of which we use today and the other one which has been systematically removed from our common source of knowledge. The first type of system is known as a symmetrical or closed system. In this kind of a system, such as when working with a motor, a naturally occurring electromagnetic resonance is cancelled out in every spin. This creates wasted energy in excessive heat and requires an additional energy source to run it. In simpler terms, this is why we need to burn fuel and blow things up in order to power something using these outdated and completely inefficient systems. But there's another kind of system called an asymmetrical system or an open system. This system allows the creation of a series of exchange of energy reaction to our inputs based on electromagnetic resonance or electromagnetic feedback in every spin on a motor or in every pulse of input in a static coil. One of the first asymmetrical motors was Faraday's homopolar motor, later modified by Nikola Tesla. These systems generate their own energy and do not require fossil fuels. So if we have an open system that allows for powering electrical appliances without the need for fossil fuels, then why don't we know about it? The answers lie in one of the greatest cover-ups in energy industry history. James Clerk Maxwell was a Scottish mathematical physicist. His most prominent scientific achievement was to formulate a set of equations that describes electricity, magnetism, and optics as manifestations of the same phenomenon, namely the electromagnetic field. His discoveries helped usher in the era of modern physics, laying the foundation for such fields as special relativity and quantum physics. In his original work, The Dynamical Theory of the Electromagnetic Field, Maxwell identified two separate systems, both of which were completely different from each other, the symmetrical or closed system and the asymmetrical or open system. One year after Maxwell's death, in 1879, scientist Hendrik Lorentz, financed by J.P. Morgan and Thomas Edison, mutilated Maxwell's original work and spent the next two decades deleting all knowledge of asymmetrical systems that would not require the profitable oil industry to operate. They symmetrized all of Maxwell's equations and labeled these incomplete theories as the laws of physics. While the laws of physics do indeed apply to symmetrical closed systems of energy, there is another set of laws the laws of nature, which apply to the asymmetrical systems that have been suppressed by the financial interests of the banking families for the last 130 years. This knowledge was banned from our educational system, and no physics or electrical engineering school on our planet would ever teach about asymmetrical systems. Instead, the first and second laws of thermodynamics, which depend on the consumption of profitable fossil fuels, would conveniently prevail in our public knowledge base. The laws of physics tell us that perpetual motion is not possible. Yet how does the Earth rotate? The laws of aerodynamics tell us that bumblebees are incapable of flight. Yet how do they fly? Conventional scientists from all over the world will make statements such as the claim that this is going to run permanently or indefinitely doesn't seem to hold because the second law of thermodynamics tells us that this is not possible. Around the turn of the century, eminent British scientist Lord Kelvin said, Radio has no future. Heavier than air flying machines are impossible and x-rays are a hoax. 
So much for conventional science. The laws of nature contain concepts that focus on frequency, resonation, vibration, magnetics, and energy. A perfect example of this can be found in the aerodynamics law-breaking flight of the bumblebee. Ralph Ring is an innovative technician who worked with Otis T. Carr, a direct apprentice of Nikola Tesla. In his presentation at the Breakthrough Energy Movement Conference, Mr. Ring gives an amazing explanation of the flight of the bumblebee. Next to the larynx in the bumblebee's throat, there's a tiny hollow tube that acts as a resonance cavity that accumulates frequency. When the bee starts beating its wings, it does this to accumulate frequency, which bounces back and forth in the resonator cavity until it reaches the same frequency of the Earth, known as the Schumann frequency. Once the bee reaches the same frequency as its surroundings, it evens out into what is known as zero point. When anything reaches zero point, you can then change the energy. The bee is now free from the gravitational influence around it, creating its own little magnetic bubble, and it hovers around. There are some lizards and hummingbirds that do the same thing. This is how the laws of nature work. When you can tune something to vibrate at the same frequency as the Earth and reach zero point, you are free from the frequency influence of your environment and can then change the energy into anything you want, including levitation or electrical energy. Many inventors have been working with these concepts to find out ways of producing energy through various devices. Michael Faraday was an English scientist who contributed to the study of electromagnetism and electrochemistry. His main discoveries include the principles underlying electromagnetic induction, diamagnetism, and electrolysis. Everyone recognized Faraday as a man of unusual character. His simplicity, modesty, and humility were deeply rooted in his Christian faith. In his scientific studies, Faraday was consciously seeking to understand the beauty, symmetry, and organization of God's creation. His inventions of electromagnetic rotary devices formed the foundation of electrical motor technology, and it was largely due to his efforts that electricity became practical for use in technology. Michael Faraday did an experiment on December 26, 1831, in which he co-rotated a magnet with a copper disc and measured a current output. Even though he had done that experiment, his own law of induction tended to ignore that fact. Known for over 150 years, the operation of the Faraday homopolar generator could not be properly explained. The world later embraced Faraday's two-piece induction generator, whose drawbacks include mechanical friction and electrical losses. Most of the mainstream scientific research in higher education systems today are funded by government grants and corporate interests. Such funding comes with a set of rules and regulations that must be followed in order to continue to receive that funding, even if the rules are unreasonable. Here's some examples. Harold Ashburton has an honors degree in engineering from Cambridge University and is also the retired head of IBM's European Patent Division. When presented with undeniable proof of a perpetual motion machine designed by John Searle, he made the following statement. The government doesn't know about the work because the government only knows what their advisors tell them. Their advisors get money from the government, and they want to keep getting the grants, so they're not giving it the chance that they should from matters like this. Ralph Ring was a laboratory technician in a government-funded research and development laboratory in Cosa Mesa, California. His job was to fire an electron through a magnetic field without deflection, and to do it in a way that they told him to do it. He was employed to repeat the same experiment every day, which always failed, at a cost of $10,000 per day, paid for by a government grant. He went home and replicated the experiment using the laws of nature, and the experiment was successful. The next day, he took his results to the head of the Department of Advanced Kinetics, Dr. Weinhardt, who gave the following response. 
I see what you're doing there, and I do understand. But Ralph, what you don't understand is that this is a government-funded lab, and we are paid to look for answers, but not to find them. Just go back to work and don't say anything to the engineers. This is not to be talked about at all. Unless the political and financial structure dramatically changes, free energy devices will not be supported by any individuals, companies, or organizations that rely on government funding to operate. Much of the world of energy has been shrouded in secrecy and deceit. Before introducing new devices to any of these facilities, it is important to first identify their funding source and any associated barriers to acceptance.